How did I write a book about my childhood trauma while taking care of my mental health, not alienating my family, and not losing myself in the process? Writing memoir is an incredibly tricky thing because odds are you are choosing to write about a certain part of your life that was difficult to live through. For me, when I was going into writing Hey Kiddo, I made sure that I connected with a great therapist and saw him on a regular basis. No art is worth you fully suffering through a mental health breakdown. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. Now, as much as you might be writing about a traumatic experience, life isn't just all dark and difficult. It's also very light and funny. So I also had so much fun revisiting some of the more lighthearted moments of my upbringing. Now, when it came to the fact that I was writing about my childhood, there are obviously family members that are surrounding me. And I made sure that anyone who was alive and still with us read early drafts of the scripts, took a look at the early sketches for a few reasons. One, I wanted to make sure that I was remembering things correctly. And if I wasn't, I wanted to be corrected. I also wanted to make sure that they were cool with their likeness and their names being in the book. I would have gladly not put them in the book or changed their name if requested. Although really tricky because my last name is Krasoska and many of them are Krasoskas and there are only so many of us. When I was first writing my memoir, I saw David Sedaris speak and I asked a question from the audience. I asked Mr. Sedaris, how does your family deal with you writing about all of their secrets? And he said, I don't write about their secrets. Which of course, if you've read his books, you're wondering, well, man, what are their secrets then? But it was profound because it, I realized that there were certain elements of my upbringing where the story really belonged to another family member. And the trials and tribulations of different family members only made it into the book when I had their full blessing and it was important to the narrative of the story. And how did I trigger memory? Because memory is tricky. Memory is malleable, things get buried. So I activated all of my senses. like. A meatball sandwich. I cannot eat a meatball sandwich without thinking of my childhood. And, and if you've read Hey Kiddo, you know why. Your sense of hearing. So I made a playlist that featured all of the songs my grandfather would play around the house, the songs that I would play in my room as a teenager. Because we all have that one song, right, that reminds us of that one summer. Your sense of touch. So when I was little, I was given this toy Tonka truck. And I vividly remember receiving this toy at a very pivotal, dramatic moment in my life. And again, if you've read Hey Kiddo, you probably remember this moment. And so I'd long lost this toy and I went on eBay and I found it. And just to hold this in my hand again, it just brings me back to that moment because, you know, my kids have toy trucks, but you know, their toy trucks are made of responsibly sourced recycled plastic. Uh, this is made of lead paint, glass and sharp corners. And of course your sense of sight. So I reviewed so many old photographs and home movies, but the most important sense to trigger memory is your sense of smell. Your sense of smell is the most powerful sense you have to trigger memory. So what did I get to trigger my memory? <laughs> so, so probably the most important investment that I made was going out and buying my grandmother's perfume and my grandfather's aftershave because just one whiff of these, it brings them back to me immediately. Like just, just a flood of emotions and bringing, bringing their memories right back to me. <coughs> yeah. So Shalimar is a very specific sense. Although one scent that I did not track down was the smell of non-filtered Campbell cigarettes because each of my grandparents would smoke two packs each per day. It was really gross. I'm also very fortunate that my grandfather empowered me to save all of my old art and all of the old letters that my mother had written to me when she was incarcerated. So throughout my childhood, my mother was either in a halfway home or in prison, and she would always send me cartoon drawings and letters sharing her love for me. So in a nutshell, that is how I prepped to make my graphic memoir, Hey Kiddo. I took very similar steps for Sunshine. Any of the characters that have the same name and likeness of the actual people, those are camp people that I'm still in touch with and I had their blessing. I hope this little crash course on memoir prep helped you. Let me know in the comments, what would you like to know more about writing and illustrating graphic memoir or, or any kind of books? Oh, I should add, um, this might sound dark, but it also helps to outlive people. So um, eat your vegetables and exercise.